Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going to be going over a guide for Tanjiro Kamado Entertainment District style. So, this character, I've been playing with him for a few days now, and I think he's kind of simple, I guess in regular Tanjiro fashion. He's probably more like Water Tanjiro than Hinokami Tanjiro. He's more based on, you know, trying to make the right decisions in neutral and like be playing, you know, kind of the general game of Hinokami Chronicles rather than like the weird mix up crazy style that Hinokami Tanjiro plays. But um, yeah, he's an interesting new character and a slightly, you know, new take on a, on a Tanjiro where he's a little bit different, but still got um, some, the same fundamentals. Um, we're going to go over the beginning stuff kind of quickly because I think by now most people kind of understand how to play this game. And uh, yeah, so regular attack strings are the same as Hinokami Tanjiro's. So what, all the good points of that one are in the same as this and all the bad ones are also the same. The up combo is kind of useful because it, you know, puts you in the air. So you could kind of get things like this, but I find that really hard to, con uh, to connect. There is technically a way of landing it, but um... It's not something I ever bother going for because I just find it too impossible to land. And the down combo is actually kind of good because it's just a really quick downward strike. So even if you're really low on the combo counter, you're often going to be able to get that downward strike just in time before the combo counter ends. And you actually do get the, the hard knockdown. The It's not a long hard knockdown, but you do get the knockdown instead of just blasting the opponent away. So if you do like some kind of combo that keeps the opponent grounded, or even an aerial combo. But if you see you have like even a little bit under quarter of the thing left, you should be, oh, I was a little bit slow there, but you can often get it as a combo ender. And as you can see there, even that simple combo did 4,000 damage just with two special moves and a few attack strings. So his down combo is quite good and it's one that I use more than in other characters. <clears throat> um, And his regular attack combo, you know, it's a bunch of hits. The last hits luckily have quite a bit of range, so it's unlikely that they whiff, even if the opponent pushes you back around this distance, just because they reach so far. And they push the opponent a decent amount of way where you can um, go for guard mix-ups. Just like most characters, he can go in for a dash cancel into a grab after the kind of like fourth cycle of but of attacks. One, two, three, oh, no, maybe the third cycle and the fourth cycle. So dun to dun, dun there. He can cancel into a grab, and after the very end, of course. If you're going for cheeky grab mix-ups. And... Yeah, so his attack strings, there's not too much to them. His armor attack is kind of horrible. I don't really like it at all. Because so often, if the opponent is doing anything that kind of moves themselves forwards at all, like if they're doing like some regular attacks or some kind of like water wheel or something and they do that while your thing is coming out and you try to armor through it he kind of just goes through them and teleports behind them it's kind of hard to show against um a, a still standing opponent because it's not going to go through him but he like kind of jumps forward in a way that doesn't push the opponent back and it ends up just whiffing a lot of the time and it has a lot of recovery if it whiffs see as you saw that that was an example of it whiffing it kind of just went beside sabito that time it didn't because he was right in front of me. But there's just a lot of situations where it'll just not really work. But, um, you know, it's an armor attack. It armors through things sometimes. But luckily you don't really need it too often because you do actually have quite a decent DP if you are needing some defensive tools. And, um... Aerial tilt attack is also kind of bad. Yeah, he doesn't have two great tilt attacks. This one's bad and also his aerial one's pretty bad. The thing that's bad about his area one, it's kind of cool that it's multi-hitting, but um, you need it to be multi-hitting. You need both of the hits to hit in order to cancel into more attacks afterwards, or to get just any attack afterwards, for that matter. So if you, like, are doing it at good distancing, like around here, you'll only get one of the hits because, you know, you're not close enough for the two hits. So if you're doing good spacing, you actually just don't get a combo, because as you can see, I, he doesn't cancel into his attacks, and you can't even cancel into special moves, I don't think. Yeah, you just don't get any cancel options, so you are... Not only do you not get a combo, you're minus and sometimes punishable depending on who you're fighting against. So it's just awful that like there's a chance whenever you use this, even if you're at the right space, that it'll just not work correctly and you'll get punished for it. So you can only really use it like when you're right on top of the opponent. And even in that situation, like getting dive kicks isn't that great. Like I don't think it's worth the risk reward for this move is completely whack. So I don't think I see myself ever really going for it. I would much rather just go for like jump attacks into the flame dance like you know 
if, instead of you know going for dive kicks in the distance i did like jump sidestep into like attack into a flame dance because you know that actually starts combos is plus unlock you know not punishable even starts a yellow combo so just better in every way than his dive kick and obviously he also has the fire wheel from longer distances um yeah not a good move his grab on the other hand is pretty excellent it is nearly round start range you, if you step a few steps inwards then it hits the opponent it's got really really excellent range and that makes it useful for you know a lot of situations where you want to grab the opponent because it does decent damage as well um there's just a lot of situations where you're going to be grabbing the opponent and having a long range grab is just handy unfortunately it's not particularly quick but you know long range makes up for it in some situations um, a situation where it is useful having long range is this situation that I kind of do a lot where if the opponent is kind of fishing for my fire wheel and blocking it to punish it you can actually cancel it into a sidestep into a grab and you do get kind of pushed far away and the opponent's like what the hell's going on and they're just standing there but then you get to hit them with the grab and even if they're like walking around because they're like what the hell I thought I was going to punish your grab will go so far forwards that it will hit them anyways and um, obviously having a long reaching grab just makes it a lot easier to do dash ups into grabs so if the opponent is standing there blocking and like being patient, you can do this a lot easier. Or if you think they're going to go for some kind of armor attack or something, you can just do this super, super easily, which is really, really handy. Okay, um, that's all of his regular attacks. His movement is, I'm pretty sure, some of the most average in the game. He's got average walk speed. Um, his sidestep is pretty good. I like a horizontal sidestep because it leaves him in the air instead of just putting him straight down to the ground. So if you do things like you are actually still in the air, so you can do stuff like that. It does also mean if you sidestep this, you are left in the air and you can do some kind of like weird attack situation, stuff like this. Um, possibly some potential there. Okay, so now for his special moves. His standing special is this flame dance, which is kind of a boring special move in my opinion. But it is kind of okay. It's um, basically the only thing that's good about it is that it's very cancelable. You can cancel it into anything at like any time. So you can cancel it into a dash cancel. You can get combos off of it. And you can cancel it into any of your special moves. But you don't really want to cancel it um, if you're doing a combo. You don't really want to cancel it into any of your other special moves. Because it either will just not combo. Or it will end the combo because if you get a fire wheel in the air it ends the combo straight there and the opponent gets to recover really quickly so you're not even plus so you only really if you're in a combo will cancel it into a dash and then do this kind of combo sequence <clears throat> um but yeah it's kind of good the air version is a lot better than the ground version in my opinion but um <clears throat> to finish talking about the grounded version what makes it good is that it's cancelability and that makes it really safe so you can honestly <laughs> you want it to, you can just throw it out in neutral and it's completely safe because you can cancel after the first hit, you can cancel after the second hit. It's super, super safe. So if anytime you realize it's not hitting, you can just be like, oh crap, I want to jump out of the way or sidestep out of the way or just dash in on the opponent if I realize I accidentally press the button full screen or something. I... These are extreme examples, but you know, they happen. You can just dash in afterwards. And obviously the same applies on block, which just makes it a little bit um, even scarier. Because he can like can cancel it, or he can even cancel it like after the first hit or the second hit when they're guarding. So it just makes his offense a little bit scarier. And um, after the second hit, I'm pretty sure, yeah, there's enough distance to cancel into a grab. So it allows you to go for little cheeky grab resets, or mix ups, I should say. And it is just, just really safe. You can actually even cancel it before the hit comes out, which can be super, super confusing. And uh, yeah, just an interesting, super safe thing. Which And it's particularly good being cancelable, because if the opponent does something like a pushback or something, and they push you away and you can tell they're going to go for a punish, if you've got reactions, you're never going to be punished whenever you're pressing this button. So you can just throw it out, and if it's blocked, you can either just dash, dash in for some mix-ups, or just dash in with your dash, because that'll break their guard eventually. And uh, yeah, it, it's pretty, pretty good and safe, but that's about it. <coughs> The aerial version, on the other hand, is a little bit more useful. I'm not sure if it's plus on block. Maybe it is at certain heights, but at most heights, it seems like it's a little minus. 
What is good about it is that it has a decent amount of forwards travel distance, as you can see there, the second hit hits around this distance. So like, in situations where you would go for a dive kick, you can kind of throw this out, and it'll probably hit, whether it's both hits or just the second hit, um, it'll be good. And what's good about this is it actually starts combos, unlike the grounded version, which you can't get combos from for free, no matter where you are. The aerial version lets you get combos for free, no matter where you are. Which is really good, and it leads to your, you know, damaging combo extensions. But of course, if you're using it in this situation, well, it's just a damaging combo starter. It's not optimal combos, it's just showing you that it can be cancelled easily. And, um, yeah, that's about it for special 1. His tilt special, or special 2, is Fire Wheel. Probably his most notable special move, because it's... What you're gonna see Tanjiro players do all the time, and I guess that doesn't really change from Tanjiro to Tanjiro. Water Tanjiro is the exact same with his water wheel. What makes Fire Wheel good is obviously it has some ridiculous range. It is like nearly completely full screen, and its travel distance is very quickly quick, making it kind of even better than Makomo's. It travels faster and even further. It's not full screen, obviously but it's a ridiculous amount of distance. And it starts um, combos by putting the opponent in a crumple state. So it is just a very, very, very good move. And that's not where the goodness ends. So it starts a combo. Unfortunately, it's red. So if it does hit the opponent, then that's good. But the unfortunate thing about it is that it is punishable. If I don't cover myself with a support or something, my opponent can punish me here, before, I, which means they can attack me before I block. Which is why usually I'll either want to cover it up with a support and then continue my offense afterwards like this. Or I would do a little bit of a sneaky thing, which is good about this move, is actually cancel the first hit and then go into something. I can cancel the first hit and go into a grab. That catches people so often. So, so, so often. Because they're, you know... They're, you know, trying to play it patient, they know stupid entertainment Tanjiro is going to do his stupid fire wheel, so they're just standing there and blocking, ready to get their punish, and then they're like, oh yeah, I caught you, and then you kind of cancel and go for a grab, and they're like, wait, 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 what's going on here? I thought I was getting a punish. And yeah, it works quite a lot of the time. You can also kind of dash towards them, and kind of, if you're quick, you can get like an aerial attack into some like weird pressure like that. Which... Maybe has some use, but I've not explored it too far. But um, it's just cool that you can make it super safe, which makes it safer than, for example, Makomo's. And as you saw there, you can actually cancel it before it even hits the opponent. So not only can you cancel it after the first hit to go into some sneaky stuff, you can just like completely cancel it, and it doesn't even hit the opponent, but, and then go for a grab, which is pretty impossible to react to if you're in a laggy connection, which is most of your connections in this game. But that is also just really good, because if you see the opponent is doing something, like, oh, that you know is going to beat them out. Maybe they've, like, summoned a support or something, something that's going to beat you up even if you hit them. Um, you can just be like, ooh, it's taking a while to reload. You can be like, oop, never mind. Let me just retreat, get back out of here. Which is a very powerful skill to have. And the extra plus of this is if the opponent is ever doing an armor attack or a DP of any sorts, it'll practically guaranteed beat it out because it teleports behind the opponent at most distances, especially if they're not blocking. So they'll do their armor attack, but Tanjiro will just go straight behind them. Their armor attack will completely whiff, and then Tanjiro is kind of just standing there behind them and gets to go in for a full punish. So not only do you get to dodge it, you don't even get the red combo that you would have gotten from landing it. You actually get just a full yellow combo because you get a full regular punish which is just really amazing, and so, yeah. Anytime if the you're in, like, kind of a weird scrambly situation where the opponent has pushed you back or something and you see they're charging an armor attack, you can just go into this in your own offense and you'll just teleport behind them and beat out their DP or their armor attack. Or even in neutral, if you see the opponent's trying to charge up a thing, just teleport behind them. Easy peasy. Keeps you safe. And if you do think they might... If you're getting to the high-level mind games, you think they're going to cancel out of the thing because they're trying to bait you doing the thing, well, you can just, you know, cancel out of it, and you've kept yourself safe anyways, and... Bob's your uncle, nothing, nothing to worry about. You can go into a grab if you like. But, um, yeah, it's a good special move, and it's gonna comprise both of your combos, because it does leave the opponent on the ground. 
So if you're trying to go for kind of deep combos, um, you're mostly going to use this special move just because it's, you know, just really easy to use. Like this combo here is a bread and butter combo. It's super easy to execute in any connection and does a nice decent chunk of damage and isn't expensive at all. 4,000 damage for two bars and it doesn't use a special move at the end of the combo so you're going to build back your meter a lot quicker. And you can, you know, also... This isn't the combo segment, but um, something I like to do is this as well. Go into a sneaky grab there. Works 100% of the time, sometimes. Okay, and I think that's all for Fire Wheel. Obviously it works in the air as well, and it works basically in the exact same way. You can cancel it before it hits the opponent, or right after the first hit. It's, yeah, the same move, and it le leads to the same combos. All right, and just make sure that you're not using it in combos if the opponent is airborne, because if they are airborne, it's just going to end the combo instantly. All right, now for his guard special, it's a, you know, a pretty decent DP. It has decent range, and it kind of has this hitbox all around him. I have not tested if that hitbox above behind him actually works, but I don't think that's ever going to be relevant. Unless the opponent somehow sidesteps behind you and then jumps as you press this, but no, it's not going to happen. Uh, it's a good DP. It's good for a few reasons. It's actually surprisingly safe. Um, this isn't something I can show too easily, but if my opponent is attacking me and I've done like a pushback and we're at this range and I hit it, we're actually left at like a pretty decent distance. Like if I've done a pushback, we're probably around here and we're kind of far away. And this is a range where most characters first attack will whiff. So if they try to get a punish, they're like, oh, I get to punish you. They're going to whiff the first attack or first few attacks and you're just going to get away completely safely. It's surprisingly, surprisingly, surprisingly safe. And if you play this character at all, you'll know how often you can get away with this. And also just look at the recovery. Look how quickly I can guard after landing on the ground. It's practically like three frames after I hit the ground, I can guard. So people have to be very, very quick with their punishes and very, make sure they do the right punish and they do the step forward attack. Otherwise, they're just absolutely not going to punish it, which is really good because a lot of, you know, you know, it's not a good example. He doesn't even have a DP. But DPs in this game have a lot of recovery, particularly on Whiff. This one, if it's Whiffed, it's basically got no recovery. You can just do it again. <laughs> it's pretty powerful. Do keep in mind, though, the invincibility doesn't start up instantly. It does have a few frames, as you can see. He kind of has to jump all the way to the top before the invincibility starts up. So I think it's around, like, five frames start up, or maybe nine frames. I don't know. It's not instant. That's all that matters. So you can't just mash it and guaranteed it'll work. You need a little bit of time for it to come out. But it's pretty good. And not only is it surprisingly good on block, it's also surprisingly good on hit. You can use it um, in combos for a hard knockdown. And does a decent chunk of damage. It's probably one of your most damaging... Um, I think it is your most damaging special move, yeah. Because it does... Yeah, 12,000, that's... 1,200, that's more than your double flame wacky thing. It's like 700, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to end your combos with your, a big chunk of damage, which is something that you can particularly do because you get a lot of hard knockdowns with your, um, the situation with your fire wheel. If you've got fire wheels and your combo's about to end, you can just go clear blue sky, and it doesn't matter if you have one pixel left of your combo counter, you're always going to be able to sneak out a clear blue sky, which is really, really, really good for ending out, <laughs> ending out rounds, just if you need that extra chunk of damage. And because you haven't used it in your combos, it's not going to scale very much at all. As you can see here, it does a big chunk of damage even at the end of that. That's just a small little example. Okay. I think that's about there, all there is to his special moves. Um, that is not it. In boost mode, I don't think his boost attack is anything too impressive. No, it doesn't do too much damage. doesn't lead to a hard knockdown. I don't see why you would ever use it. Just go for a damaging combos in boost mode. Um, in surge mode, I think you're just gonna kind of be going into the one special move. Usually characters switch in between two of them, but this guy's probably just gonna be doing one of them. Because if you go into your flame dance and make the opponent airborne before you do more fire wheels, you're not gonna be able to combo continuously off of them, like we mentioned before. And his ultimate has the same activation as Hinokami, Wait, I think maybe that's new actually, but um, it's a decent activation and you can connect it off of most of your enders, including your flame dance. You can just mash it and it'll hit the opponent right before they hit the floor. 
for an easy guaranteed ultimate. That obviously looks very stylish. And uh, yeah, let's get into the combos. So, this character has basically two combo routes you're going to be going for. You're either going to be going for grounded combos, where you go for some hits into a fire wheel, some hits into a fire wheel, and then whatever ender you choose to go for. If you just want to keep it cheap, you can do a down combo. It does 4,000 damage. That's still plenty of damage for a combo that costs you barely anything. Um, or you can, as I mentioned, you can be a little sneaky and sneak in some extra damage by going for a grab. Dash cancelling and then mashing the grab button gets you over 50% of a Sabito health bar. And Sabito isn't low health, so that's pretty, pretty nice damage. And it's pretty guaranteed that that throw is going to hit at least the first time that you try it, because it just catches people so much. And, um, yeah, those are the two main enders you're going to be going for. If you do have an ultimate, you can actually throw in a... That's an ultimate. You just do three hits into your flame dance, mash your ultimate, and then that's going to be a simple combo, way to combo into your ultimates after that whole situation. Um, and then the other combo path that he has is doing some hits into his flame dance and dash cancelling it and then doing his aerial attack string into flame dance again because then that will, you know, bounce the opponent again. And this is kind of typically going to be your more damaging combo route, but they can be kind of similar. But if you are aiming for max damage, it is probably going to be combos using these routes. Oops, you do have to be a little bit careful just with all juggles, specifically with certain attack strings, and unfortunately Hinokami Tanjiro and Entertainment Tanjiro do have problems with their <laughs> attack string whiffing on a juggled opponent. But uh, yeah, do a few hits into your flame dance, dash cancel, few hits into your flame dance, and you can do a down combo, or you have a little bit more time so you can go for a flame dance again, or any kind of other ender that you would want to go for. So I'm not entirely sure what the optimal combo to go for here is, but they are generally going to be more damage than your other routes. But I still prefer to go for the other routes most of the time, just because they are just a lot easier to do. You don't have to have the question of any juggles possibly going wrong. You can just smash some buttons, go into fire wheel, even if you accidentally do too many buttons. Like, it's okay, you can just, like, end it earlier and you'll just get, you know, decent chunk of damage, keep it simple, make sure you can't mess it up and lose the damage, and uh, yeah, you love to see it. If you want to go for a cheeky throw, grab, mix up, reset at the end of the combo, for a bit of extra damage, you can, but yeah, it's just a super simple route. If you get in combos off of your red attacks, well hopefully you aren't, because both of his red attack starting combos are kind of bad. But I usually will just go for a full attack string. Oh, the most common red combo you're actually going to get is off of your fire wheel. So off to that, you can either get a down combo, which is, you know, nice. You get your hard knockdown and they're left in your face. Any of your combo strings will, like, fit into this time. I honestly usually just recommend doing that because you can do other stuff. But it's going to cost you a bunch of meter to get not too much damage. And I think it's best just, you know, keeping it one bar, short little red combo, just go into an attack string and let yourself get the meter back. Let it be an opportunity to build some meter back. But obviously you still have, oops, you have the ability, if you want to sneak in some more damage, you can sneak in a cheeky throw reset. You can always sneak in a cheeky re throw reset. But uh, yeah, that's about all you're going to get. You can probably sneak, yeah, you've got a little bit more time here if you want to do that, you get 4,000. So you can get some decent damage off of this, and you'll be able to go into an ultimate, obviously, very easily, thanks to the hard knockdown. Um, but if it's off of your other red attacks, I suppose you can just do a few hits into your flame dance, have the opponent blast it away, or go for a cheeky throw reset. I don't recommend spending much meter, just probably go for it. 
you like your tilt down combo or use a flame dance at the end of the combo just to build some meter back. Just uh yeah, don't waste your meter at, at bad times. Especially when he likes to use a lot of meter to keep himself safe, like with stuff like this, or with, you know, being able to cancel this at any time to keep himself super safe. It's, it's, it, he likes to have meter. And it keeps him as a strong, scary, powerful character. <laughs> but seriously, combo-wise, I think that's about all there is to this character. If you get, like, a flame dance, the opponent will be in the air, so you're probably going to be doing your flame dance combos. Which is basically, yeah, the two categories of combos he has is grounded combos, where you're going to be doing your fire wheel loops, and your airborne combos, which is where you're going to have to do your flame dances. I prefer to do fire wheel combos, just because they're easier and cheaper, but you know, make sure that you know you can do your flame dance combos if you do ever catch the opponent in the air. And, uh, yeah, if we quickly talk about pressure, so, which is kind of like combos on a guarding opponent. If your opponent is guarding, you can obviously chase them down with a fire wheel if they push you back. I don't recommend it though, unless you're going to cancel it off of the first hit. To go for some sneaky stuff into a grab, that works really really well, especially if you let the first hit hit. It is pretty expensive though, so you want to make sure you're only using it if you aren't able to open the opponent up in any other way. I'd recommend going for other throw resets before you start going for that kind of thing but um your flame dance is pretty good it moves forwards a little bit so if the opponent pushes you back there's a chance that the flame dance will hit them and then after it you can cancel into a dash in and that usually will give you time to continue your offense enough to break their guard and uh yeah he's pretty simple when it comes to pressure wise he plays the game kind of similarly to most other characters if you want to do things you're gonna have to be going in for like cancels into sidesteps into throws into stuff and that's the only real main way he's going to be extending his pressure because he doesn't have anything that's like plus on block or anything but at least he's able to keep himself super safe so if the opponent has pushed you back um or is going to do something and you know you're going to lose you can jump and sidestep out of the way or if you see the opponent has pushed you back and that you think they're going to go for a dp make sure that you know you can use fire wheel because that will beat dps and armor attacks so you know, make sure you keep that in your back pocket as well other than that, Entertainment District Tanjiro, I think, is a solid character. Nothing too broken about him. Just make sure you're keeping in mind when you get combos, if they're on the ground or in the air, that you're going for the right combo loops. That you either go for your um, fire wheels or your flame dances. And make sure you know how to keep yourself safe if you are using your fire wheel recklessly. Fire wheel safely, everyone. That's, <laughs> that's the memo to Tanjiro Entertainment players. But I think that's about all there is to say about the character. We showed a combo into ultimate, the two combo paths, and he's got simple pressure. So, Tanjiro Kamado, Entertainment District, is a pun character, pretty simple, he's very safe, and that's probably his strongest asset. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! -bye.